What is up guys? This is Steve with Love Away LLC, the premier removal service, locally known as Lug Away. We are a junk removal and demolition service located in the greater Boston area, right outside of Boston in Massachusetts. Um, I am making this video for you guys uh, regarding pricing, how to price your trucks, how to price certain material, how to price certain jobs. Uh, it seems to be a big question that a lot of the guys starting out have. Maybe some of you guys that have been in the business for a minute, you know, you need to change things up. Um, I'm here to offer some guidance on that. So, that being said, how to price your truck. We price on volume. You've probably heard it a thousand times. You ask someone, how do you price all this stuff? Oh yeah, we price on volume. What does that mean? Pricing by volume, charging by volume means that your customer is being charged by how much space their junk fills up in your dump truck. They will pay for what they fill. That's the easiest way to explain it. Some people still don't get it. There's no way around it. You pay for what you fill. Your customer is being charged by how much space they fill inside of your dump truck, inside of your trailer, whichever it may be that you're using. Um, a lot of us use 15 yard dump trucks or 15 yard trailers. If you have something smaller than that, you need to understand that you're, you're using a 10 yard truck, you're using a 12 yard truck. You can't be going price searching and trying to match these guys prices when you're not offering as much space. So you need to figure out what size your truck is, what size your trailer is, and you need to you know price that accordingly. So charging by volume, you need to have price points on your truck. My company, Lugaway, we have 13 price points. Now some of you guys are probably like, what the heck, 13? We have 13 price points and it makes it seamless for us. We know exactly what to charge the customer with the exact amount of space that they fill. Um, I know that some guys, you know, they charge by the item. Um, that's not how you do it. That's not, you're not gonna, you know, make a successful business doing it that way. Um, to start off, you don't need 13, you need at least four, but you kind of come into some problems with four. So when, when I started Lug Away, we had four price points. We had a quarter of a truck, a half truck, three quarters of a truck, and a full truck. The problem with that is when we filled less than a quarter of a truck, like an eighth of a truck or a sixth of a truck, I didn't have an exact number for that. So I would take the cost of a quarter of a truck and say, uh, you know, I just charge them a little less because the stuff's not that heavy, but it's not really a quarter of a truck. And um, I never had an exact number to give someone for that. Um, that hurt us a little bit because when the customer is watching you, you know, finish packing the truck and you hop down, they go, all right, great, what do I owe you? You can't give them an exact number. That's a little fishy to them. That doesn't uh, give them the confidence that, you know, you're, you know, you're not screwing them. So we have 13 price points from the minimum to a full truck um, and it's seamless for us. So speaking about the minimum, you need to have a minimum. The minimum is absolutely necessary. I didn't have a minimum the first year I did this and it killed us. Um, our minimum is $95 um, here in the suburbs of Massachusetts, right outside of Boston. I know guys that service the same exact area as us and their minimum is 225. And there's another guy who's like, I think he's like 150 or 175. Um, 95 is gold for us. You need to have a minimum uh, because you're, you're gonna find that you're driving all over the place, you know, picking stuff up for $30, $40 and it's, you're never, you're never gonna make any money doing it that way. Um, so you're gonna find your minimum by finding what your um, your costs are, your expenses. So you're gonna need to figure out, you know, how much it costs you to show up to a house. That's your minimum. What does it cost me to get there? So you got your truck insurance. You got, you know, hopefully you have liability insurance. If you don't, you should have it. You got workman's comp. You got X amount of guys working for you. Um, gas on the trucks. Um, you know, maintenance on the trucks, wear and tear on the trucks. 
Uh, all this stuff adds up to you know the number that you have to find that that works for you that works for for your area. Um, our number is 95 and it's gold for us. There's there's no no problem with that. You will have customers that balk at that cost. They're gonna say, oh, you want to charge me $95 to come and pick up you know a, a tiny dresser um, or you know a, a kid's basketball hoop. It, it's not it's not your problem if they don't want to pay it they can figure out somewhere else to get rid of it but you need to have the minimum so that you're not wasting your time with these these small jobs um, and some people are gonna be more than happy that you're you know you even answered your phone and keep in mind there's always gonna be a guy who's gonna do it cheaper than you that's why you need to have a seamless structure going on so that you know what you're talking about. Your customer feels confident that you are confident. And you got to be upfront and honest with these people. I'm an open book to all these people. So that's why we have so many returning customers. That's why we have people that say, oh, so-and-so said they use you. You guys are great. Boom. It's like, it's, it's like night and day between how I used to price that first year that we were in business. And we still got returning customers that first year, but... It was uh, it was stressful because I didn't feel that I was being fair to some people and and vice versa. So you need to you need to have um, everything set in stone, but you need the minimum. That minimum is is an absolute. Uh, the other cost you need to figure out that's going to help you price your truck is your cost per ton to dump. So you're going to get charged by weight. You, Typically, you pull up to your transfer station or your, or your the dump or whatever it's called wherever you live. Um, you hop on the scale, you dump the truck, you pop back on, and you get charged by the ton. Um, we get charged, you know, an astronomical rate compared to some of these guys in Texas, some of these guys in California. I know I've seen their videos. You know, they're getting charged, uh, you know, 40, 50 bucks a ton. Um, I can tell you right now, that's less than a quarter of what we're paying for a ton. Um, so our our costs in in Massachusetts, um, right outside of Boston, uh, are are high. They're they're very high. So you need to figure out what your costs are at your transfer station. Go on go on the town's website wherever your dump or your RTS is, and figure out what it costs per ton for you to dump your truck. That is not for concrete, that's not for yard waste, dirt, none of that. Uh, some of it could be you know, by the ton, but a lot of times you get charged by the yard for that stuff. Um, so this is strictly for the furniture, for the junk removal, the construction debris, the demo debris. That's gonna help you figure out what you need to charge people per quarter of a truck, per half a truck, if, a, if you fill a full truck. Um, you gotta figure out if you're including labor in those costs or are you charging them for a half truck and then you have a labor rate on top of that. How much weight are you including in your costs? Um, you know, a lot of guys will cover up to a ton. Some guys will cover up to two tons. Um, we cover up to a ton for residential and when we're doing work with contractors We cover up to two tons because they know they can get a 15 yard dumpster and have it covered two tons So you, you got to figure out what works for you and you got to you know be a little bit flexible and and um, In your in your in your pricing based on what your your customer base is at, uh, at that job um Another thing you gotta look out for is where the stuff is located. So we have two different ways we price. If we can back right up to stuff, that's one pricing structure. If we have to go into a three family and we're clearing stuff out from three different units or, or you know, a, a big house over in, you know, in the suburbs it's got four floors and we're clearing out the entire house you know we have a pricing structure for that so you need to you need to figure out how much you're gonna charge if you can back up to it if it's on the first floor if it's on the second floor if it's on the third floor 
Some of you guys, you're not in the East Coast, you might just be dealing with ranch style houses. Um, that's all one floor. That's not really gonna be, you know, that difficult of stuff to do. We we only have two two pricing systems. Can we back up to it or do we have to go into the house and get it? And that's it. Um, and that works wonders for us. That's gold for us. Nobody, um, nobody ever says, "Oh, you're charging too much" or, or any of that. And and me and my guys are confident that when we go in somewhere to do a job, you know, we get. What is this guy doing? I hate bikers, by the way. Not bikers, cyclists. What they call themselves. Um. Yeah, you need to you need to have those two different uh, two different price structures. Another thing you're gonna want to uh, keep in mind is your extra costs uh, for specialty items, miscellaneous items. You're gonna get charged to recycle stuff, televisions, air conditioners, um, refrigerators, some appliances, propane tanks, tires, fluorescent light bulbs. I mean, at least here in Mass. You name it, they're they're trying to nickel and dime you for it. Um, but you want to recycle that stuff because you don't want to go into the landfill and uh, you don't want to be illegally dumping that because you're gonna they're gonna pull your sticker or pull your permit to dump. You're not gonna be able to dump at the facility anymore, or they're gonna start pulling stuff out of the load and saying, hey, you know, you owe us 150 bucks. That could be your profit off of the job you just did. Um, so you need to know your extra costs for those items and you need to pass that on to the customer. Uh, where we are in mass, we get charged $20 for a television or a, or a computer monitor. So, you know, it could be a 10 inch monitor or it could be a, a 60, 50 inch, uh, TV, 20 bucks. So your customer may not understand that. They look at it and say, oh, you're charging me 20 bucks for the flat screen but you're also charging me 20 bucks for, uh, you know, the tiny computer monitor that's 150 years old. Um, so you need to know your cost for those items and pass them on to your customer. Whether you're making a profit off them or not, you need to pass that on to your customer. We don't tack anything onto it because those items um, are, you know, they don't take up space in the truck. So we charge 20 bucks for a TV. We get charged 20 for the TV. Um, you get charged 10 bucks for a propane tank. You know, we, you know, we charge them 10 bucks for the, for the propane tank. Uh, appliances are different. Refrigerator um, costs us like 35 bucks to get rid of. We'll charge someone 40 or 50 bucks for it because um, those do take up space in your truck but you need to figure out what those costs are for those kind of you know specialty or miscellaneous items and pass them on to your customer um, and you need to know what your transfer station or your dump is going to charge you ahead of time you can't tell your customer oh I'm gonna you know pack up the truck and we're gonna leave and I'll you know I'll send you a bill later um, you know, people don't like that. They want to settle up with you there, um, on the spot. They want to know, you know, what they're, what they're going to owe you because you could leave the dump, go do another job and, you know, start adding on random numbers. They don't know what's happening. The, the, the goal is to get these people to call you back and to be a returning customer or get them to tell their friends to hire you and say, oh, these guys are great, they're upfront, they're honest. That's what people say about my business and you know, it works wonders for us. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll make sure to get back to each and every one of you guys. Um, let me know where you guys are from, what you guys get charged per ton, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, hit that subscribe button.